Good morning, everybody. Sorry I missed you guys or in the chat until the very end. Uh, Miss Stipley and I had a party to go to. In fact, uh, it was supposed to be in the beginning of October that we were supposed to have that party, but uh, Miss Stipley and all of her girlfriends, uh, they all caught a bug in the beginning of October. So it was pushed back to the very beginning of November. And I... There's a part of me that's kind of like, oh, I would have liked to be on the chat, but then I was like, no, I mean, it's just the nomination show, and that's not to put anything down about it. It's just one of those where it's like, I mean, I, it would be easier for me to say to Miss Stipley, okay, the award show, I have to be there, but for the nomination show, no, nah, I can miss that. There's other people there. Vanessa was there. Amanda was there, so... But sorry I missed you guys. Now, one thing for you guys all to know, on my timeline, because of uh, there being so, so, so many political ads just enveloping everybody's timeline, uh, what I'm doing is I'm just posting like four to five random comic book covers during the day to give you guys a break to give you guys a break and a, a cleanse to your timeline so if you guys see that why I'm posting uh, covers just randomly that's the reason why and I've already I got uh, some uh, comments already today for uh, the X-Men issue that I put out um, and it was the issue where Bush Bishop makes his very first appearance in X-Men. So that's the reason why I put it up. I already got one person commenting. So that's my gift to you guys, is give you guys a, a palate cleanse on your, uh, on your timelines from all of the, uh, vote for this person, vote for that person, this person's evil. So, okay. Sorry about this. Um, throughout this video, I'm going to have to stop and I'm going to have to clean this nib. For whatever reason, it's not the nibs. It's the ink itself. It's For whatever reason, this ink is very thick and it doesn't... Even though it's almost a completely full uh, ink well. So, that's why I'm going to be stopping periodically. Um, sorry about that. It, it does suck. Uh, let me use a different nib. It's still going to do it for this nib because it's the ink. It's not the uh, nibs itself. So, because like any nib I use, it's, this is happening. So, let's go in here and we'll hit his neck. So, but you can see where I've already kind of hit here. Um, so, I'm trying to, because he inked a little bit of it already. So, I'm just going in and stippling. So, usually you take a look, it's because I'm stippling so much. It overpowers that if you have to be really looking for it to see it. And I'm going to I'm going I'm going to ink around that so it blends in. So maybe I'll do that today with today's video. So, but so yeah. So I didn't get you. I wasn't until like the very end, and I, I I watched. I'm watching it this morning, pretty much all the way up to when I was joined in. And you guys had some really good picks um, for Community Ambassador. Yes, Michael Bancroft, of course. And I hope Michael Bancroft wins it for the fifth year. So he uh, will be have that title named after him. And he will, uh, we can, it's our way of awarding him and saying thank you to him for all of his work over the last five years. So I, I, I admit I, I'm very biased with that one. I would really like him to win it. I hope uh, I hope there's nobody uh, who's streaming who is going to be vindictive that night and we get a true uh, voting in of who's worthy and not just spite voting just because some streamer says it. I mean, you think about it. Well, look what happened to Peanut. Because some woman was jealous of how many followers Peanut had on Instagram. 
So and that's the reason why I, I, I really hope that he wins it. I mean, but that's not saying anything bad about the other people who have been nominated. Uh, Irene is just as worthy of winning that award. Uh, same thing with uh, Mo Biggs, Shane Davis, or Mange Davis, whichever it is you consider is uh, doing the being the community ambassador. Uh, Eric July, I mean, yes, Eric J July has really gone, stepped up and really starting to uh, push other people's work, not just his own. He's, he actually did a video uh, saying, hey, these are the creators you really want to be checking out, which I thought was a big thing for Eric. And I remember when he first did that video and we we're like, well, what's your response? My response is, thank you, these guys. Thank you for pointing these guys out and their hard work, Eric. Thank you very much. And then, of course, uh, Sean and Jetty and Aaron Presti. So, but I, I, I'm being very honest with who I hope wins it. So, and then, of course, best cover. And wow, there was a lot of. For me, it was like somewhat surprises with it. But I mean, we've got uh, Ethan Van Skyver's uh, Inglorious Rex 3. Uh, Elephant by John Malin, uh, Groken Three by Kenneth Rocafort. Um, we've got uh, Carnal the Barbarian by Rainey, and we've got uh, uh, Inglorious Rex Three: The Red Rocket cover by Shane Davis. Um, I don't. I mean, I really take a look. I mean, I can't really think of any cover. Other than like Aaron Lepresti, really, that I'll be like, no, they got robbed. This category got robbed by the popular kids. So, and then of course we've got the uh, we have uh, best writer. Uh, I think Shane was just as was was very well deserving in uh, getting the nomination for Inglorious Rex three. I I'm sorry, Inglorious Rex two. I enjoyed Inglorious Rex 2 immensely, especially the way he ended it with that cliffhanger. Like I said, I was reading that when I, <clears throat> and it got to that final page, and because there were still like eight pages left in the book, to then turn the page and we were like, that's the end of the book, and he's got like uh, all the various covers in black and white format in the back of the book. I was like, son of a bitch! Oh, that's where you ended it. God damn it. I mean, that's good. I mean, that, that's good storytelling. So I, I think he was well-deserving of that. Uh, uh, Carnal the Barbarian. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Lucent, Michael Bancroft. He has such a uh, loyal following. He deserves uh, the nomination. Uh, uh, Lost Pages 3 by Phil Diaz. Yes. Uh, Phil's been working very hard. Building up his category, and the big thing is, is that he does. He's been. I mean, think about it. Lost Pages three, but he also had uh, so many other like sub uh, 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 supplemental books. So yeah, I think he deserves it, and he is a good writer. And then of course uh, we had uh, <clears throat> uh, Wraith of God two by Aaron Lepresti, and then uh, Godlike by John Mail. Now, which I thought for sure. I know we have the Guapo rule that prevents. I thought Wraith of God was just outright uh, not disqualified from all categories, but I guess I was wrong. But I mean, hey, uh, he has male and has the ability to be in have his book nominated for multiple categories. So, but then like we have like best ensemble show and best ensemble show. Uh, it was a mixed bag with that one. I was kind of surprised that uh, the bros didn't get it, didn't get uh, into the nomination. I know that they were nominated, but they weren't the final five to be in for the show itself when we do the award show. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Greybeards, uh, uh, Creative Block, Hardline, uh, Ballers, and Jack Show, so... I have a feeling that one's going to be going to either Ballers or Jack Show. Uh, maybe 
I see that's where it's like ballers ballers become almost like a derivative of the Jack show. So for me it's one of those like who's gonna win that one because they have pretty much close to the same audience. Um, I think that one's gonna definitely go to one of those, whereas I personally uh, I would rather go to uh, Graybeards. I like Graybeards a lot. It's comic book focused, but they still... Uh, it's just a fun show. Um, and and what also what I like about it is, is, it, is that Aaron's been able to build up that show that it's not necessarily comic skate, so he's been able to get all these other uh, creators onto his show... To, and all they do is just draw and chat and, and laugh. And that's what we need. That's what we would want from an ensemble show. We don't need a show that uh, uh, gets, the, gets the fervor of the audience. So, cause, I mean, I'm getting the time. It was just too much negativity. And even with our show, we try to keep our show positive, but yet we got a lot of that negativity. And we cover it. And we... We become a therapy session for the chat. So I'm, I'm very glad that the Gray Beards, being such a positive show, uh, got nominated. So, and then, of course, uh, Best Value. Um, this one I was actually surprised. I wish I'd been actually gotten in on time uh, that I could have uh, posted or uh, suggested. Best Value would have been uh, Lost Pages, The Tome. By Phil Diaz, that that digest size. I thought that was a great, great book that he did. Uh, really gave me a chance to get caught up on all of his uh, characters and stories without like having to break the bank with getting every single book. So I really like that. I wish I had, that had been. I don't even think that one was nominated, but I wish it had been. But I mean, the nominations for best value. What is going on with this nib? Come on, come on, come on. There we go. So, we've got... So, yeah, the nominations for Best Value are Inglorious Rex 2, which I think is well-deserved. I would I would actually go as far as say uh, that nomination isn't just for the main book, but also for the supplemental. I thought the supplemental uh, tied in great with the uh, second issue. Uh, I was highly impressed with that one. Everybody who knows me uh, knows I've been I spoke very highly of that supplemental book, not just with story but with art. And then, of course, we also have uh, *Lucent Painted Death* by Michael Bancroft, uh, Kit Carter. Uh, even I, I, that's one well deserved for best value. Uh, even though I haven't gotten mine yet, I'm looking forward to getting mine. I haven't gotten mine because. I got so much stuff, which include the hardbound book, and of course we all know that uh, Aaron uh, has had issues with the printer, uh, where there is a malfunction with the machine, so the binding for all the hardbound books had to be reprinted, which he got in on the 31st of October, so Halloween night, I think it was like 11 o'clock at night, they arrived. Wow. I mean, it, it, that, that comes down to, Aaron, was that a trick or a treat that they arrived at 11 o'clock? <laughs> so, and then, of course, uh, we have uh, Godlike and uh, uh, Black Riding Hood, both by John Malin. Now, here's my thing. I'm kind of glad he got both nominations. Because what that's going to do is that's going to split the Malin vote. Which will give other create these other creators uh, uh, a greater possibility of them winning. Um, I myself, I hope that Kit Carter wins. Uh, I'm very open about uh, my support of uh, of Aaron Lepresti, um, but I have a feeling I have a feeling that uh, in Glorious Rex Two, uh, I think I have I have a very strong a feeling that that one's going to win. Uh, best value this year. So, let's see here. I need to... I think if I just hit down here more... I think that's all I need to do. Let's see here. 
Yeah, I think that little... I don't think I need to do anything. I could put, it like, a light... I might. I might just put a light tone in here. Let's see if we can clean this nib. Let's see what results we get. Maybe we can get a nice... A nice under... Like, that... The bottom lip. How the upper lip is actually... Old, cast a shadow in the bottom lip. Because it also folds in. So let's see how we do with that. Let's see if we can get that put in here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I like that. And then we can also... Because of the curving backwards, the curvature of the side of the mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Hold on, let's see if we can do some more. Let's uh, clean this nib off by wiping it on the cloth. Dipping it down. Okay, let's see here. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. Did that turn out good? Tell me, okay. like I said, when you after, when you after you've uh, put it in the comments, give me a uh, give me a like, like this video, hit that smush, that like button, and uh, tell me in the comments. Feel free to share it out so other people can give me their opinion, and of course uh, subscribe. Uh, Never say no to a subscription, even if it's somebody who's going to bash for my stuff all week uh, and like EFAP it and make fun of me. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to say no, I'll take a subscription. So, yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking how this is turning out. So, let's see here. Yeah. Let's see. We've got to get really dark in here because of that nostril. Yeah, and then what I can do is, because I'm going hard here, I can then hit up here on the underside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And you notice how I'm doing it, it almost blends in with the line work. So, let's, and then we hit up in here, hit over here, because it folds back. Yeah, I like how that turned out. I like it a lot. So, we can always hit some more in here. Because that's the one thing is that when I try to hit, I try to add like a, you have your white, you have your white, and then you have your black. I, by, by doing the dots, you're adding a third tone, just like how a lot of people do uh, cross-hatching. And you think about it, a lot of this adding a second tone to it, like, I, like you, how you do zip a tone, it's becoming lost because everybody's like, oh, that can just be done in computer coloring. But that's the reason why I do this is because so much is now being lost with computer coloring and the black and white still because I remember one of the first things I was I remember being told uh, when I was at the Kubert school and it was actually by a fellow student it wasn't actually by uh, it was James Francis and he said and he was absolutely right when he said this uh, when you're doing your stuff pages your pages should not need color they should stand out on their own strong enough that they don't need to be colored so and he's absolutely right and that's why i do strive for even more so now with the stippling is to create that tone so that way it doesn't need to be colored at all so but but no i think that uh mailing with best value i think he's going to split the vote uh because he's been nominated twice uh that, i know and the reason why i say that so emphatically is because I do remember other creators uh, having their votes split. In fact, I think uh, the last, I think it was, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, uh, 
people were doing that with uh, Groken too. And because of that, there was a lot... Groken did not do as well because he was being nominated for multiple things in the same category. So I think that's the reason why it's always... Once you have your one... Uh, once you have your one uh, nomination in on one category, that's all you want. You don't want multiple nominations because you're going to have some people who are fans of Malin that will be doing uh, Black Riding Hood, and you're going to have others that are doing Godlike. So that's going to split his vote. And then lastly, uh, the Book of the Year. Book of the Year is, uh, we got Rex 2, uh, Lucent Painted Death. We have uh, 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 Kit Carter by Aaron Lepresti. And we've got, oh, I gotta look here, Lost Pages 3 by Phil Diaz and Rini with Fiendish 2. So I really like this how it's shaping up. I guess it was Book of the Year has the WAPO rule, but I guess I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Eric de WAPO next year at the rules meeting uh, reinforces that it should be for all categories. So we'll see how it goes. So, But we got one more week of nominations, and then after that we've got the actual show where we will be awarding these voting and awarding uh, with a congratulations from us to the creators. So, but, yeah, I know, I'm going over in time. So, but I'm liking it. I'm liking how this is turning up. I got to hit this ear. I need to hit this ear here with some hard blacks so that way I can take this tone here and cover the entire ear with maybe a few spots uh, of white. So, but yeah, because you take that, that doesn't make sense for it to, for the what for this ear here to be white. So you guys gotta go in, hit those black areas, and then we go in with the uh, the mid tone. So. Uh, Hit it up here. I know, I know. This video is basically should be over, but I don't want to stop. So you just go bear with me while I finish this up. So let's go in here. Get darker as I go up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. So, there we go. So I'll go in and afterwards. I'll go in and I'll put in the this tone, spread it into the rest of the ear. So... You guys have yourself a good day. Uh, remember, we got two more days of this insanity, and then hopefully, uh, hopefully, life can turn to return to normal a little bit at least. So who knows in today's charged environment? But remember, life is always going to be stressful, and that's why we just all got to take it one dot at a time.